All right, Paul Sponsia, CEO of the IT company, working in the comfort of my home under COVID-19 pandemic stay-at-home orders, as all of us. And I'm, I'm here with my uh, my friend and uh, my attorney, and from a business perspective, uh, John Wood. Um, and I'm going to let you tell everybody who you are and, and who the firm is and kind of what your specialty is and et cetera. Okay. Yeah, my name's John Wood. I'm with Edgerton McAfee here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we are a general purpose law firm that represents businesses like Paul's in all types of uh, matters from litigation to transactional matters. Uh, my background is specifically in software. I have an undergrad and, and master's in computer science. I worked for an extended period of time in the software industry before I went to law school. And so my practice has focused around assisting technology companies, software companies. Um, and then I, uh, with you know licensing issues, software, technology, uh, I do a lot of trademark work, copyright work, those types of things. Um, and also general business work as well. So we're here to talk about this, uh, I, I joke, um, this term called force majeure, which I think most of us have probably seen in our contracts and probably been like, yeah, yeah, yeah what's this thing in there? It looks like a French word, <laughs> I don't know, right. you know, and I see some stuff in there, but I mean, when's it ever going to be useful? Well, here we are, pandemic. A lot of people are now paying attention to this clause in their contracts, so maybe you could give everybody just what the heck is force majeure? Sure. So force majeure is designed to allocate risk when there's an unforeseen um, act, like a pandemic. Uh, usually you'll see a word in your force majeure clause like act of God. So a tornado, um, you know, a hurricane something that when you entered into the contract you didn't foresee as prohibiting you from performing under the contract and so the purpose of the force majeure clause is to say if this happens i'm excused from performance mm. that's that's what you're you're trying to do and that can benefit you know both parties or it may only benefit one party mm -hmm. so excused from performance does that mean you know because this happened can the contract be canceled or is it you can't cancel the contract? I just can't be held to the standards of the contract. Is that kind of the idea? So it's a contractual term and you could have a force majeure clause that says if this condition continues for so long, then I can cancel the contract and I no longer owe you money under the contract and we can continue. You have force majeure clauses that say for whatever period this happens, the contract is then extended for that amount of time on the back end. Okay. Um, or your most common force majeure clause kind of leaves it ambiguous and just says performance is excused for the period of time that this happens and I'm not, not held liable. Okay. So it really depends on what your, what your contract says. Um, hmm because it is just a contractual term that's allocating risk between the parties. Yeah, interesting. So here we are, um, you know, COVID-19, nothing that probably anybody except for Bill Gates was thinking about <laughs> <laughs> as a potential thing to take place and, and other people too. Um, does it does it apply? Do you, do, are people trying to to use it? Does it apply right now? Is it something that people are pulling their contracts out and saying, oh, here we go? Uh, I, people are pulling their contracts out and people are looking at this clause and trying to figure out if it relates to them um, because all of a sudden they may not be able to operate their business. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the first thing you see, see is people don't want to pay their rent. They're right. like, I can't get into my business Good one, then yeah. I don't want to pay my rent. And like I said, it really depends on what your contract says. Um, so we have had clients um, that have received letter that are landlords that have received letters that you know where the tenant says, "Hey, I've been ordered to not operate my business 
so I'm not going to pay you rent mm. for this period of time and we'll extend the contract on the back end. Now, in many cases, the contract doesn't allow for that. And actually, if you're signing a contract written by a landlord, probably what the contract says is that the landlord is excused from providing you um, from performing, which means mm. providing the property to you in the case of a force majeure event like a pandemic or an act of God, anything that's unforeseeable. Uh, so if if you're the tenant and it was you have a, an agreement that's written in favor of the landlord, you you may not have as much relief as you might think. Thanks. Now huh. the landlord may just choose to defer your rent for a couple of months just uh, to help you out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it may not be required to under under the contract. On the other hand, if you have a contract that says, in the case of a force majeure event, I cannot operate my business, I don't have to pay you rent for that period of time. I'm excused from my performance of paying rent. If that's what your contract says, then you should write your landlord yeah. a letter <laughs> and say, hey, I don't have to pay you rent. But most landlords' forms, if you just sign their form, are not going to say that. Yeah.